Self-care is important, girl, because hygiene school will drive you crazy. guys welcome back to my channel it's your girl Taja for juice and I am back today with another dental hygiene sit down video thank you thank you so in today's video I'm going to bring you guys the top 10 tips to make sure that you are passing dental hygiene school if you're still watching this video make sure that you are subscribed to the channel hit that subscribe button down below I don't know if it's on this side or this side, but go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell because I will have a lot more of those type of videos coming to my channel. Um, whether you're a first year or a second year, I feel like we can all learn from those tips and really any students, you could be nursing student, you could be really starting college. Um, I'm going to be dropping some jam, you guys. Like. Your girl got a whole list, <laughs> okay? I wrote things down and I really woke up with that idea. I am a registered dental hygienist. I've been practicing dental hygiene for over two years now. It took a year and a half for prerequisites and two years for the actual dental hygiene program. Um, I do have my associates in hygiene, not my bachelor's yet, and I am working for a corporate company as of now. I have a lot of different dental hygiene videos on my journey, how I started, advice, every detail of each semester so I will link some of those videos down below if you want to check it out so tip number one is preparation yes going into the dental hygiene program whether that is your first semester or whether that is your last semester you want to make sure that you are prepared going into it whether that's mentally prepared financially prepared you need to know what you're getting yourself into especially for my first year students know that you are getting ready to start a very hard and competitive program um part of the preparation i feel like also going to hygiene school is knowing what you're doing it for because when times get hard you'll be able to go back and say hey this is my motivation I'm doing this for my son or I'm doing this for a better future or I'm doing this to help people so always always remember what you're doing it for part of preparation also is to make sure that you are financially prepared for the dental hygiene program you are going to need money money okay funds dental hygiene the dental hygiene program across the board is somewhat expensive it is not crazy expensive but financial aid alone might not cut it um with that being said apply for your financial aid early on and do what you got to do to make sure that you're getting the funds if you don't get approved for financial aid you might want to think about things like scholarships um getting out a loan and also really different ways to finance for your classes so make sure that you are mentally prepared and you're financially prepared going into the dental hygiene program my second tip is to be organized you're gonna want to be organized going into the dental hygiene program being in the dental hygiene program listen I'm not the most organized person like I wasn't I'm still not but I had to make sure that I have my stuff together making sure that you have a planner with you um and that's not just gonna help with your day-to-day -day schedule you can also kind of create a, a studying schedule with a planner but you're gonna want to be organized because you're gonna be juggling different classes and clinic and let's be real we all have our personal lives i worked two part-time job my first semester of hygiene school here are the best ways that i think you can be organized first things first the first semester okay your first semester going back make sure that your first day of each class you know when they hand you that syllabus and there's like okay these are your test dates your exam dates your quiz test um you know it has a date and a schedule for everything go ahead and get your planner write down all of the most important dates as far as your test exam board dates deadlines write all of that out in your planner and most importantly i would have a studying schedule so Especially on Sundays. I did this on Sundays going into a new week or during the weekend going into a new week. I would go ahead and write down, okay, on Monday I'm studying for pharmacology. Tuesday afternoon I want to start reading for like um, 
a clinic quiz Wednesday I'm studying for biology whatever that you know like any test quiz whatever go ahead and plan out a studying schedule that's gonna help you tremendously but staying organized is gonna be like crucial I went ahead and bought a freaking printer I bought a paper and ink because you're gonna have so many like projects and 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 just different work that my room turned into kind of an office and i had to keep things together just so i don't go crazy but yeah i think being organized is definitely an important tip tip number three do not procrastinate cut it out if you know you're a le <laughs> if you know you're a lazy student you just like to wait last minute to do projects and when you were taking your prereqs you just studied like two hours before the test cut that out you might try it in dental hygiene school but it won't get you far and take it from me when i tell you it won't get you far what i would do after my classes whenever we learn a new material and i know that okay i'm gonna be tested on it whether that's next week whether that's the week after go home and start reading up on that material again a lot of times when you first learn about it that information is still fresh on your mind same day so going home and reading about what you learned that same day is definitely going to give you a little bit more coverage so when you're really ready to study things will sound more familiar things will be easier for you to memorize listen everything can start building up like this you might have three four tests the same day your pharmacology teacher won't care that you have three other tests and three other classes she's just worried about the you know the material in that one class and what she's giving you so you're gonna have to you know keep up with your work and make sure that you are you know studying same day or studying ahead of time don't be that student that's like studying last minute or not sleeping through the night studying three four hours before a test it will not get you far take it from me don't procrastinate if you want to make sure that you are succeeding i was the type of student that had to make sure i'm keeping up with my studying and my reading constantly for me to succeed like you know how some students in your class they don't gotta study about the test they don't gotta study the test they don't gotta read on the material they're just good at taking tests like I had a few students like that in my class unfortunately that wasn't me I have to study the test I have to reread it and I gotta have flashcards for me to pass the test so I you know I knew what type of student that I was when you know that you just gotta study you gotta make sure you're keeping up with things just do that okay tip number four you guys is finding a good study method slash study group study way whatever find a good study method for you whatever works best for you and will guarantee your success find that stick to it and use it every single time study groups I was not the biggest fan of study groups because I always felt like when I'm in a study session and everyone's talking about the test material, I start freaking out if I don't know what they're talking about. I would be the one to just having like start having anxiety about the test and just leave because I'm like, I need to sit down and study this by myself. But what I did do was I would have I would study the material first I would prepare and then maybe the night before the test or a couple of days before the test I would get together with a study group and we can review together and question each other so that way if one person is missing out on an information we can help each other out in a sense but I didn't do good good with like just studying right off the bat with study groups you know so that was me personally so find what works best for you flashcards if flashcards were good for you, go ahead, go to Home Depot, go to Target, go ahead and stack up on flashcards and use that. Um, another method that really helped for me was highlighting things. I would have different colored highlighters. Finding your study methods definitely will help because you're going to have to cram in so many different informations that when you, are, when you know your study method, you are definitely more confident about what's coming because you know you have a method to succeed okay tip number five is practice 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 spend a lot of hours practicing your clinical skills um and i cannot stress this enough i've seen so many dental hygiene students um get kicked out of the program and just be non-proficient because of clinical skills it's very important you guys because in dental hygiene school you're dealing with the classes 
studying for classes and stuff and you're dealing with everything that is hands-on as far as how to hold the instrument how to work with the instrument how to take blood pressure my school we had something called tutor track and i've talked about this before so basically after hours like let's say after clinic around five o'clock the clinic is open for like an hour two hours so they give you that time for you to go in clinic and practice on like a mannequin or practice on each other or even practice on your mouth model but make sure you're practicing your instrumentation skills you guys because i feel like it's so easy to study a material and say okay i'm just gonna cram this up and study it really good and then i'm gonna just take the test okay and you can pass boom but when you're dealing with hands-on and you are gonna be tested on how you hold an instrument trust me it's harder than it sounds like it is hard you guys it's hard to learn a new instrumentation skill and to adapt to it because when they when they teach you a new skill you have probably a week or two to make sure you know that skill and get ready for your test so they give you about a week or two and then you take your proficiency to learn a skill it requires practice so whenever you have time go to clinic um practice on each other don't be afraid to ask for help because that's what they're paying the instructors for they're paying them to cater to you to help you succeed so use that resource okay tip number six is to start thinking about your boards early on um i say this but personally i don't think i started really worrying about the boards until i started my second year so like fall fall semester of the second year um that's when it was like okay i gotta start finding my board patient i gotta start taking my board review but listen up you guys the whole time you're in the dental hygiene program every single thing that you're learning from start to finish is preparing you for your national boards which is the written portion and for your state boards which is the clinical portion when you bring a patient and you work on them so never forget that don't just study for pharmacology and you just memorize that information just for tomorrow's test and then poof it's gone you need to memorize that information also like long term that's why i kind of go back to when i said to find a study method because you want to find a study method that's going to stick me personally i'm kind of a visual learner anything that i studied in dental hygiene school i pictured me doing it on a patient so whether i studied how to take like um whether i studied a type of medication let's say like a high blood pressure medication i really pictured myself in a scenario with a patient talking about the patient about their their condition and what type of medication they take i say this because not only you're gonna use it for your boards and you're gonna use it long term for your career don't freak out about it too much because um when you get to your fall semester of the second year they're gonna start preparing you for board reviews the national board review really provides you with a big handbook 500 something pages of every single thing that you studied for the program and practice quiz questions that are going to be on your boards now if you're in a school and they're like you're not required to go to a national board review it's up to you trust me and take it from me go to the board review you want to be there like no matter what they provide the book for you i think i paid for something almost 500 dollars for the board review um or was it that much was it like 300 it's not cheap but you want to go to the board reviews take it from me when i tell you that go to the board reviews okay so where are we at where did we leave off at all right so tip number seven and it kind of goes into tip number eight as well they're kind of the same but it is self-care and tip number eight which is a healthy balance a healthy life balance so i'm kind of gonna talk about both of those two because i feel like they kind of intertwine a little bit but self-care because you guys there is so much stress going into this there is a lot on your plate a lot on your shoulder so you're gonna have to find a healthy balance and self-care is important there's a time when you're gonna have to just put the book down you're gonna have to just close that laptop and you're just gonna have to cater to yourself for your sanity okay so by self-care if there is anything you know outside of work and outside of school that calms you down whether that's yoga a workout a walk with your friend a walk with your husband an afternoon jog meditation anything for the zen okay because you're gonna need it <laughs> self-care 
is important, girl, because hygiene school will drive you crazy, okay? Self-care is needed, you guys. It's needed. Take it from me when I tell you healthy life balance. Make sure that you are eating healthy. Make sure you're getting at least seven hours of sleep. That might be pushing it. Some days, that's probably not going to happen. Some days, you might get about five. Okay. Pamper yourself if you can. If it's when it's around Christmas time, any birthdays, and you know, if anybody asks you for a gift, or if you know anyone who's in a dental hygiene program, give them a massage or a spa gift card because they will need it, honey. So provide that type of self care to yourself. Pack a good lunch to work. Um, I said work, school. Pack a good lunch to school. It could be protein shake, protein bar, nuts, water, a good little lunch, just to make sure that in the midst of everything, you're still taking care of yourself. Tip number nine, support system. Okay, support system, support system, support system. You're gonna need a support system, period. Family, friends, close friends, husband, boyfriend, sighting, side piece <laughs> any type of support system that you can get i just feel like take it um you're gonna need these people not only for support but also you're going to probably need them for to be your patients you're probably gonna need them to be your patients in clinic because when it comes down to requirements you have a list of requirements in clinic and you're gonna have to find certain patients for that so that's where your friends come in handy my mom was my first dental hygiene patient in school Use them and let them know what you're going into a lot of people don't understand the extent of school um, and I feel like whether that's nursing school you're going to medical school you're going to dental school dental hygiene school it is all a big stressful process so let them know how extensive this is for you and really let them know what you need of them I'm like hey I might not be able to do uh, taco Tuesdays with you every week girl because on Tuesday nights I gotta study for my test on Wednesdays but I'm just letting you know this is like what I'm getting ready to go into and I would love your support I hope you understand like let them know because you know, I have lost friends and I have lost certain types of relationships with people and have you know it's sad to say it but um, some people just didn't understand that you're fighting for something bigger. You're fighting for a better future. So if they can't be on board, deuces. That brings us to our last tip, which is learn how to turn your failures into success. You are going to fail at something. It's not a, it's not a if, but it's a when. It could be a small pop quiz, but try to find the root of the problem. What made you fail? You know, was it just a lack of preparation? Was it a, a clinical skill that you were not as good as? So use that to turn it into success. I, I talked to you guys a lot about how I have, I was really close to filling certain classes, or at least it was one class, it was a nutrition class, but I also did feel certain proficiencies and I literally thought that I was not gonna make it through the program. But once I really found out my weaknesses, that's your goal right there. That is your key to flip the whole situation. Well, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. That concludes my top 10 tips for the dental hygiene program success. Let me know if you guys enjoyed this video and drop some tips down below if I missed anything because I know that there are so many tips out there. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next video. I appreciate the love and support. Thank you guys. Mwah.